intermittent rain, low overcast, visibility severely limited, terrain mountainous with heavy foliage. Enemy forces are reported massing in the area. The mission, seek out the enemy, determine his strength, his disposition. Intelligence reports enemy forces are gathering somewhere in this area, north of the river. Apparently two regiments, reinforced, probably armed with light artillery, maybe bringing up some armor. Orders are to search the area and attempt to locate their headquarters. Aboard the aircraft, the pilot selects one of his checkpoints near the assigned area and enters its UTM coordinates into the system's computer by use of his control panel. Minutes later, the pilot and his observer are off the ground in their reconnaissance aircraft, multi-sensor equipped, armed with a 30 millimeter cannon and a flexible turret. Flying at nap of the earth altitudes to reduce exposure and avoid detection, they head toward the search area. While rising to altitude for a search with radar and moving target indicator, the observer notes and reports river traffic and movement to the north. He marks these on his map plotter. They then descend for closer examination. Using the night vision system and the magnifying periscope, the river traffic is identified. While the pilot uses natural terrain to avoid enemy fire, the observer, utilizing the laser rangefinder, locks his sight and slave cannon onto the target for automatic tracking. Then he fires the cannon. Proceeding north from the river, the observer uses his forward-looking infrared sensor. It shows several hotspots. To further identify these objects, he switches back to the night vision system, illuminating the area with covert light. They are identified as moving vehicles, so the observer zooms in on the target to see a tank. From standoff distance, the observer locates the tank and uses the laser. Then activates the data link. Automatically, the position of the target is transmitted to the intelligence center. By voice radio, the observer describes the target, an unidentified tank. A killer aircraft is assigned. Meanwhile, intelligence requests photo identification of the tank, if possible. Again, the reconnaissance aircraft approaches the target, this time flying a spiral maneuver to avoid gunfire. However, gun bursts appear on the other side of the aircraft. Quickly, the pilot swings his helmet sight onto the source of fire. The cannon follows automatically. With the ground fire suppressed, he proceeds out of small arms fire range. Reconnaissance photos are taken with a high resolution camera linked to a synchronized covert light. As the reconnaissance aircraft again takes advantage of terrain cover, the killer aircraft, an AH-56A, approaches the target and blasts it with a tow missile. The reconnaissance aircraft makes another photo pass for damage assessment, then proceeds to scout the assigned area to pinpoint the location of the enemy headquarters. Both infrared and radar sensors are ineffective because of heavy foliage. The alerting tone from SIGINT, signal intelligence from sources of electromagnetic radiation, informs the observer of radiation detection. This system provides 360 degree coverage. FM radiation is noted, originating from a point bearing 030 relative. The aircraft continues on course, obtaining another bearing on the emission to provide a fix. The target coordinates are computed and automatically displayed on the observer's control panel. The observer notes the position on his map plotter and activates the data link, which automatically transmits the target location back to intelligence. Hugging the terrain to avoid detection, the aircraft seeks out the source of the FM transmission 
searching with the IR sensors for some indication of troop concentration or movement. But the heavy jungle canopy makes detection difficult. Suddenly, with a break in the foliage, strong infrared sources are indicated by the downlooking IR near the location indicated by SIGINT. During the return to point maneuver, the observer uses IR playback, recognizes vehicles and campfires, and transmits their location to the intelligence center by data link. The target is assigned to an artillery battery. They request meteorological data up to the 10,000 foot level. The pilot initiates a climb to the requested altitude. The observer activates the meteorological data link control. This transmits automatically the required meteorological data, which is available from the various onboard flight sensors, back to the artillery battery. With this information, the artillery is aimed and fired. The reconnaissance aircraft stands off to provide possible fire correction and damage assessment. With the enemy encampment destroyed, the reconnaissance mission is continued. This mission, seemingly impossible with today's equipment, can be accomplished with this airborne system and within a relatively short period of time. It would be a reconnaissance version of an aircraft already flying, the Lockheed AH-56A Cheyenne. The multi-sensors it would utilize are currently available or in engineering development. Equipped with these sensors, this rigid rotor compound aircraft will offer significantly improved reconnaissance capabilities for a variety of tactical roles. <laughs>